Hey y'all, it's me, the indie comic book guy. Today we're going to review Keisha Carter is Mega Woman Issues 1 and 2 by Godhood Comics. Now, if you haven't checked out my review of Sharpshooter, also by Godhood Comics, definitely check that out in the links below. So, let's just get into it. Keisha Carter is Mega Woman. I like this cover. It says a lot about what's going on in the story that's of course mega woman and people on to the, over here these are her parents it's another detective who that is actually this hair she doesn't actually appear in this issue she appears in issue two and this kind of sets things up so let's let's get into it Keisha Carter is Mega Woman. Starts off, of course, you have to have the creative team. Tyler Martin is becoming one of my favorite creators, one of my favorite writers. He is a master at world building. If you want to take a master class in world building, this is the man to see. I say this because once you actually get into the comic, Instead of just diving into the pages, he gives you a white page, which explains uh, Keisha's origin, which explains Mega Woman's origin. Basically, it's been two years since she found out that she's the last daughter of Zeus. So she's kind of a god. So she's been dealing with that. Um, and also, since she became Mega Woman... All of these other superhumans have come out of the woodwork. And in this universe, they refer to superhumans as superiors. So that's interesting there. So all that is summed up right here. Instead of wasting two, three, four, five pages. Some people will even waste the issue. Just explaining that backstory. Tyler's like, yo, that's not important right now. Let's get to the actual story I want to tell. Meanwhile, you have this whole backstory right here, which she can use later on and go do an origin issue if he wants, but it sums it up right there. Let's get on with the story that we were telling now. So, the second paragraph pretty much explains where the story is headed. A villain called Capital X, he's escaped prison, mega woman, she went in to get him, blah, 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 blah. Pretty normal, right? A villain escapes prison. The hero goes and tries to recapture him. But this is a Tyler Martin story. It's not going to be as simple as that. So, we get into the comic. Cops are there on the scene. Mega Woman's already in there. This guy pops up. Turns out that Detective Carter is Mega Woman's dad, or at least the guy that she thought was her daddy. So, cool thing about him, he's not too happy about these superiors running around. Even though his daughter <laughs> is Mega Woman, she's a superior. He's not too happy about that. So, he wants to go in there with his own special task force that are, are trained to kind of take down superiors. Which... I would love to see these guys in this red armor, see what they can do with it. He's like, yo, I'm going in there. Our plan is to rescue civilians first, get them out of the way, let Mega Woman and Captain X take care of themselves. So basically, he still has confidence within Mega Woman that she can handle this. Meanwhile, her mom comes like, hey, babe, what are you doing? Our daughter's in there. He's like, damn, look at that expression. It's like, damn, woman, why are you here? Why are you here I'm trying to do my job? You're embarrassing me in front of my cop friends. She's like, but Leon, that's his first name, Leon Carter. Our daughter's in there. He's like, yeah, she's a superior. She can take care of herself. We need to rescue these people first. So she pleads with him. And he's like, yeah, all right, babe. You know, I go take care of this. She's still like, that's superior is your daughter. 
like I said, he isn't very at ease with all these superhumans running around. But, you know, his woman. And I love, this is one of the things that I love about this script is that Tyler, instead of just jumping straight into, hey, here's Mega Woman. And I noticed this when I read Superior, I mean, Sharpshooter, number one. He lets the readers know about the characters from other characters before you're introduced to the main character. So it's a good literary tactic to use. That way you're getting that insight into who this person is based off other people's opinions of them. In this case, it's their parents, her parents. In Sharpshooter, it was the villains and how they felt about Sharpshooter, even how they felt about Mega Woman. They were actually comparing the two. So I love when writers do that. So you have this family dynamic. You have the dad who raised this little girl thinking it was his daughter. Now find out she's the daughter of Zeus of all people. How can you compete with that? He still loves her, but he feels conflicted because he doesn't trust this whole superhuman community that's emerging. And most of them tend to be villains, but... You know, he loves his wife, and he still loves Mega Woman, so we'll get into that. So then an explosion goes off, and everyone reacts, like, what's going on? And he's like, look, woman, I'll be home and deal with you later. We can have sexy time or something. Right now, I got a job to do. Okay, he didn't say that, but that's the look he gave a look. That's that look of, yeah, girl, you know what's going to happen later. It's going to be on first Let's go save my daughter, our daughter, the daughter of Zeus. So, you know, she's still over there like, oh, please do something, Harry. So he has this special task force that has this red armor. I'm a, I imagine they had specialized weapons by looking at the glow. And he's going in there. So meanwhile, before he goes in there, he gets a call. It's the president of the United States. He's like, say, but how would the president kind of looks like Obama a little bit to me? But it would be fun if the president was uh, Trump. He's like, "Hey, we got some really bad guys in there. They're doing some really bad things, and we want you to be a good American. And I want you to take them out. But if you can't, we got some really good missiles. We're gonna go ahead and aim them at the building." And we're just going to take care of it because that's what we do in America to make America great again. That's what we're going to do. It's going to be a great time. Everybody's going to be there. And things are going to go booey. That would be the reaction he had if he heard something like that. So anyway, the president calls an airstrike. And Detective Carter's like, hey, you know, my daughter, Mega Woman's in there. There's still innocent people in there. Presents like whatever, dude. So they got ten minutes to get this situation taken care of and stop X from whatever he wants to do. What does he want to do? He wants to kill Mega Woman. There she is, Mega Woman. And the thing that's revealed. Let me pull this back. Is that Captain X? He has ties to Mega Woman. As well as her dad, because Mega Woman's the one that stopped him and put him in jail along with her father. So he has issues with them. He wants to see both of them dead. And part of the reason why it's not just because they put him in jail, it's because his grandmother died while while he was behind bars. So that adds a very human element to an otherwise traditional story. So. I like that they added that element to this villain. It humanized him because you have a lot of prisoners locked up today that family members die, uh, kids get older, kids start their own family, and they never see any of it. So that was, that that's good writing. Good writing. So they're fighting. They're fighting. Some good action shots. Fighting some more. Meanwhile, you know, Detective Carter's trying to clear the building. It's like, hey, y'all need to get out of here. We got like five minutes now. 
Fighting some more. That's a good shot of Captain X. And he's, you know, he's pissed. He's like, yo, y'all did this to me. I just want to kill you and your daddy. That's what's going to happen right now. Just as strong as you. So, more fighting. More fighting. It gets intense. They're like, really turn this building down. That's when he gets the call. He's like, we really are running out of time here. We really got to stop all this. Mom's pleading again. He says, F it. I'm going in. So he decides to go into the building, put a stop to this himself. Mom is still like, hey, you know, save our daughter. He's like, I will, babe. Later we can have some intense hugs after this. You know how this action stuff makes me feel like Bruce Willis. This, like, die hard. I'll see you later, boo. You my forever, boo. Okay, he didn't say that. But it could have. So, Captain X is, like, beating the mess out of Mega Woman. And it's, I kind of get the feeling she was holding back. Because what's revealed in here, look at this action, is that due to her being a god, Gods have this vengeance kind of wrath within them that they're constantly fighting. Like, their nature isn't just to be good people and protect people. Their nature is to, you know, bestow vengeance upon people. So she's fighting that. And I love that aspect of this character. So she knocks him out. Dad comes in. She's like, what are you doing here? It's like, hey, I came to, you know, kind of get you out of here and put a stop to this. X takes advantage of this situation. And, you know, he's like, hey, I got both of you in here now. And then Detective Carter starts shooting at him with bullets. But X is like, you know that can't do nothing to me, right? You know that, right? He's like, yeah, I know. But what he was doing, what Detective uh, Carter was doing, was pretty much causing a distraction. That way, Mega Woman had time to kind of regroup herself and, you know, save the day. But while she's over there, you know, kind of just in La La Land, X manages to just crush her father's hand. And she's seeing this, and he's about to die. And that's when she, you know... Kind of gets that second wind. It's like, yo, my power level's over 9,000. And, you know, that second wind, she's like, we got to end this. So that happens. They're still fighting. Meanwhile, you know, the mom, who should be at the hospital, she was sent back to the hospital because she's a doctor to kind of take care of people that were injured. She's rushing back. Like, forget this. And this is the scene that I love in this book. You have the mom rushing back. You have the fighter jet shooting this missile at this bank. Who does this in the middle of a city? You're like, right? Who does this? And you have all this going on. It's a very climatic scene. Like, what's going to happen next? She's losing the fight again. Mom's coming. Missile's coming. They're still fighting. Dad's trying to get people out of the building, and then boom. Let's zoom in on that. The building explodes. President, he gets the report, and he's like, did I do the right thing? And she just looked evil and sneaky, and she's like, yes. I'm your trusted advisor. Do what I say, Daddy. It'll all be right. So he looks kind of like Obama. He even got the big ears. So... That was it. That was Mega Woman number one. Uh, I don't want to show the pages for issue two yet because I want you to go and read issue two. Basically, to sum up issue two, there was a different artist uh, on that book. You are introduced to Hera. Am I pronouncing that right, Hera? She's basically, you know, one of Zeus's women. She doesn't like Mega Woman. Mainly because there was a prophecy that Mega Woman was pretty much going to 
become the new Zeus. And she's not happy about that. She wants to destroy all the gods. She wants to rule again. She was pretty much exiled by Zeus. And she's been living among the humans. She hates humans. And she's going to be a very interesting villain. And you also get a little bit more of the backstory with Mega Woman. As well as an ice-based villain is introduced at the end of the issue. So you have the big bad of the series revealed. As well as another uh, villain who looks like she's going to be fun. Uh, it's kind of like a what if Harley Quinn had ice powers type villain. So that's it. That's Mega Woman issues one and two in a nutshell. What are my thoughts on this issue? You know how I do. When we review these issues, we look at three things. Story, art, and value for your buck. Story-wise, I'm very happy with Mega Woman issues one and two. Uh, Tyler did a great job of world building, as I said earlier, letting you get to know these characters. And I'm glad we got to know the mom and dad in issue one more so than Mega Woman herself. It really built that family dynamic that's going to be important to this series going forward. Issue two, we got to know Hera and her backstory, as well as a little bit more about the gods and this prophecy that Mega Woman's going to fulfill. So these are very interesting things. This is great world building. I would love to see Tyler's take on a character like Wonder Woman or Thor, any of these god-like characters that have this strong backstory with deities and gods and so forth. So the fact that Mega Woman is the last daughter of Zeus, that threw me by surprise. But it wasn't something that Tyler was like, yo, we're going to hold this back. It's been a big reveal. No. I feel that since he's just let you know in the first paragraph, hey, this is who she is. She's been operating as this superhero for two years. There's a lot of backstory to pull from. Her relationship with her father, very interesting. So story-wise, I'm in love with this book. Art-wise, I love the art on issue one. Issue two, it wasn't as flashy. It wasn't bad. It wasn't on, it wasn't as flashy as issue one. Uh, and some people are going to be thrown back by that because issue one, this art was amazing. Issue two has more of a old school approach to it. It was still good, but it wasn't as flash and modern as this. The fact that they saved uh, issue two to reveal Hera and her backstory, which uh, I loved as well as playing off the events in this issue, and you get that fallout of this battle, and you get a good sense of who Mega Woman is going forward. So, art-wise, cool. I'm happy with the art, even though I do wish the same artist would have drawn issue two. That's just me. Now, entertainment value for, for your buck. Whoa. What was I entertained by this issue? Good question. Good question. I think you can tell by just my overview of this, these two issues that I was very excited. I was very excited to read this. Now, how, what would I rate this issue? What would I rate issues one and two? Um, overall, at a one through ten, Let's, let's go ahead and do it. Y'all want to do it? Let's do it. Let's, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna rate Mega Woman a ten out of ten. I don't think I've given that score to a book. Like I said, even though personally I didn't like the artist switch, it wasn't bad art. Because I know that's what some people are going to be like, but they switch art and shouldn't the score go down? If it was bad art, yeah. But it wasn't bad art. Uh, this is definitely a book that I think Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, 
any of these titles would love to have on their hands. So Godhood Comics, they have a real gem on here. And I think Tyler Martin, if he keeps writing at this level, he's going to become your new favorite comic book writer. So, yeah, we're watching you, Tyler. We're watching Godhood. And we can't wait to issue three.